The following program is produced by Project Bait and does not reflect the views of this station. This is Mark Wells, and this is part three of the Wells Report on the global African presence before my people. In part two of this report, historian Runoko Rashidi estimated that there were up to 300 million people in the subcontinent of India that he considered to be black. Although I must admit, there are certainly physical similarities between the people of southern India and sub-Saharan Africa. I must also acknowledge that modern day DNA analysis shows that the people of India are genetically more similar to Asians and Europeans than Africans. With this in mind, I had to ask Rashidi how he would explain certain physical similarities that peoples of southern India and the inhabitants of Oceania share with sub-Saharan Africans, even though genetic analysis suggests that they are totally different people. Uh, humanity came from Africa, okay. and in some of these places I think those Africans retained more of that original phenotype. Now, I don't know what DNA evidence says about that, mm -hmm. but if you go to places like, as I mentioned, Fiji, or if you go to uh, Buka Island and Bougainville Island in Papua New Guinea, the people say they come from Africa, mm -hmm. and they're very clear on that. And so I'm not going to discount that because of um, what scholars claim about DNA. Maybe I don't fully understand DNA studies or genetic studies, but in, in addition to the physical similarities, you have to go with the tradition where people say, and they're very proud of the fact, uh, they're very proud to say they do come from Africa. So according to Rashidi, regardless of genetic analysis telling us that the peoples of places like Australia and Papua New Guinea are completely different from sub-Saharan Africans, peoples in some of these places acknowledge themselves as descendants of Africa. The funny thing about this whole DNA thing is that scientific racism was used for many years to give the perception that Africans and Europeans were polar opposites and completely different. When in reality, the genetic difference is greatest between sub-Saharan Africans on one side and Australian Aborigines and New Guineans on the other. Genetic differences of populations increase the longer the populations are thought to have been separated. Thus, since the populations of Southeast Asia and Australia are thought to have left Africa about 60,000 years ago, and populations of Asia and Europe left Africa about 40,000 years ago, this means that genetically, Africans and Europeans are more similar than Africans and New Guineans and Australian Aborigines. But that still isn't the whole story. In talking about the Aborigines of Australia, I would also like to briefly mention a population known as the Tasmanians. Although most of us probably associate the term Tasmanian with the Looney Tunes cartoon character, the Tasmanian Devil, these were people who lived on the Australian islands of Tasmania, which are located to the southeast of the Australian mainland. When the British arrived in Australia and the Tasmanian Islands back in 1803, there were an estimated five to 10,000 indigenous Tasmanians living on the island. The Tasmanians went extinct due to the diseases that the British brought with them to the island, but also because of the mass killings that victimized them during the Black War provoked by European colonists. Some historians have labeled this war on the Tasmanian people as genocide. William Lyon, who died in 1869, is recognized as the last full-blooded Tasmanian male. He was married to a woman known as Truganini, who was known as the last full-blooded Tasmanian female. She died in 1876. Recent studies have discovered a genetic link that shows that Australian Aborigines landed in Australia by way of India. These findings suggest that groups migrated out of the Horn of Africa through Arabia and Southern Asia, eventually ending up in Australia more than 50,000 years ago. Evidence supporting this theory shows that the people of India have a genetic mutation that they share exclusively with the Aborigines of Australia. Analyzing the Y chromosome and mitochondrial DNA of Australia's Aborigines and the people of Papua New Guinea, Researchers have provided further evidence supporting the out of Africa theory as the origin of the world's population rather than the multi-regional theory that says that various human populations evolved out of separate groups. So as we can see, with the passing of time, modern science will continue to put together the fascinating puzzle that is the human family. And although there are still many unanswered questions, scientists still agree on one thing. The continent of Africa, having the world's oldest populations, has the most genetic diversity of any continent on Earth. 
A Bushman from South Africa is as genetically different from a Nigerian as that same Nigerian is from a man from Europe. And speaking of Bushmen, Scientists agree that if we are to truly understand the origins of modern humans, the peoples of southern Africa are key to this understanding because their DNA is perhaps the most diverse on the entire planet. With this in mind, it is fitting to hear what Runoko Rashidi said when I asked him what he wanted people to get from his work. I want people to develop a greater sense of African consciousness. I think that Africa uh, needs us and we need Africa. I think that Africa will never be free, and we will never be free until we join hands. I think what we are lacking in the diaspora, for the most part, particularly the United States, is a consciousness of Africa, a sense of pride in Africa, the sense that what happens in Africa matters to us and should matter to us. So I hope that my work will inspire that degree of pride, that degree of, of interest. I want us to be interested in what happens uh, in our sacred motherland and African populations scattered around the world. As somebody once said, we should spend more time talking about where we got uh, picked up from rather than where we got dropped off. Now for those of us who may be interested in discovering a history of African exploration before the beginning of the transatlantic slave trade, I asked Rashidi to recommend a few books that could get one started on a path to a history of African people that won't be taught in the classroom. To which he responded, I think all of Ivan Van Sertima's books, okay, beginning with They Came Before Columbus and the anthologies like African Presence in Early America, my own book, African Presence in Early Asia, that I co-edited with Ivan, Africans in Early Europe, Blacks in Science, Golden Age of the Moor. Um, I mentioned Destruction of Black Civilization by Chancellor Williams was a book that had a tremendous impact on me. But I'm very partial to Dr. Van Sertima because his works, his anthologies in particular, cover such a wide range of topics and brought so many different scholars together. So I think that those works in particular should be first and foremost in any African-centered library. With that said, let us all remember that the Western education system will never fully portray the complexity of African history. If we want to know the full history of the motherland, the cradle of civilization, it is a history that we must discover for ourselves. Learning about the travels, adventures, and lectures of Runoko Rashidi about the global African presence are a worthwhile and fascinating introduction to one of the greatest stories never told. This is Mark Wells, and this concludes a three-part series on the global African presence for For My People. There are three basic necessities every business needs. A business plan, a bookkeeper, and a website. Call Project Bait for all three. Call 313-871-3333. That's 313-871-3333. If you are in business, you should promote your business in the Metro Business Information Guide. For more information, contact Chris Woodard at 645-2282. That's 313-645-2282. The preceding program was produced by Project Bait and does not reflect the views of this station. Hi, join me, Lexi, Daddy Peoples, and other gospel